I can remember as if it was yesterday or maybe the day before, oh, okay, maybe the day after. I was six at the time. And I had an opportunity to visit the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. You see, we were visiting my grandfather, my mother's father. He was a retired executive from GE who lived in Schenectady, New York. And, and we decided to take a day trip and go to Cooperstown to see the Baseball Hall of Fame. I can remember seeing the bust of Babe Ruth and Ty Cobb and Mickey Mantle. I, at the time, was a Baltimore Orioles fan. And my childhood heroes were Brooks Robinson, who played a mean third base. He was a human vacuum cleaner. And Mark Belanger, who played shortstop. And Boog Powell, who played first base. Frank Robinson, who played right field. Paul Blair, who played center field. And who could forget Dave McNally, the left-hander. And who can forget Jim Palmer, the right-hander. All of these later will enter the Cooperstown Baseball Hall of Fame and have their busts along the sides of Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, and Mickey Mantle. I only mention this because Hebrews chapter 11 is really the roll call or the Hall of Fame of Faith. Let's take a closer look at this criteria to enter the Hebrew Hall of Fame. It begins at verse 1. When the writer gives us the definition of faith, he says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. A better translation of the Greek word hypostasis is reality. So it should read, faith is the realization of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. In other words, faith is the process by which the promises of God given in the present become realized in the future. Let me repeat that. Faith is the process by which the promises of God are given in the present to become realized in the future. This enabled the Old Testament saints like Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses to greet the promise of a home in a homeland from a distance, possessing yet not possessing the promise for they died having faith in the one who is the architect and builder of that eternal city. Let's let, take a closer look at the life of Abraham and see why he is called the father of the faithful. You recall Abraham was given a command by God to leave his father's household and land for a promise to make his name great and to have descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Later, Abraham will receive an additional promise of land. When his foot falls on the land of Canaan, Abraham will sojourn across the land of Canaan in tents while the inhabitants live in cities. He will even buy a plot of land, the very land God has promised to give him to bury his wife, Sarah. And yet, Abraham's faith never wavered in the one who calls things that are not as though they are. And it comes to pass. This was never more important in the command to offer up his son, his only son on Mount Moriah. Isaac will ask Abraham, I see the altar, I see the wood, I see the knife. Where is the lamb? 
Abraham will respond in faith and say, God will provide. And he did. No doubt Abraham's faith was put to the test as every last person in the Hebrew Hall of Fame, faith was put to the test. You see, it's not enough to believe in the promise of God. One must be willing to stake one's life on the promises of God. As this next story will illustrate, <coughs> he was a famous tightrope walker and he walked across Niagara Falls. He did it in the presence of the King of England, King George. He walked across and came back to the Canadian side and said to the king, do you believe I can take this wheelbarrow across and come back? And the King of England said, yes. And so he did. And then he asked the king, do you believe I can take an individual in this wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls? <clears throat> and the king of England said, yes. And the tightrope walker says, get in. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And the king said, no, I value my life too much. You see, those who are in the Hebrews Hall of Fame not only believe in the promises of God, they're willing to stake their life on the promises of God because they believe God is a rewarder of those who seek him because they believe in a better place, not in a physical promised land, but in the eternal city whose builder and architect is God Almighty. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm having trouble with my voice this morning. And so the writer goes on to mention other people in the Hebrew Hall of Fame, and then he says, people that we don't even know about yet still overcome great odds, who endured persecution, who were tortured, and some even died for the faith. And yet, all of them were waiting for that day when God's promises would come true. They greeted the promise from a distance because they were waiting for the day when God would send his son, the Messiah, the author and perfecter of our faith, to live and walk among us, to show us how to live and show us how to die. Yes. Jesus is the author and pioneer of our faith. The writer goes on to say that these Old Testament saints, they've run the race set before us, but now they're in the stands cheering us on to run our race set before us. Did any of you watch the Olympics? I watched the Olympics last night, and I was watching the swimming, and uh, I watched the Americans, uh, the men's swimming team and the female swimming team, and uh, we were hoping that they would win, and we were cheering them on to victory. Uh, they didn't quite make it. They came in second, but it was fun to watch, and congratulations to the Australians. They did a marvelous job. but. You could sense the excitement in the crowd as people are cheering them on. Think about people in our own congregation who have joined those Old Testament saints in the stadium. 
They ran the race set before them. And now they're cheering us on. I'm thinking of people you probably know. Tony Bove. How many of you know that Tony Bove had a street named after him? Did you know that? And, and, and you know where that street is? If you go down Main Street South and you go by the Red Cross, you'll see Tony Bove Avenue. And it's right beside the Red Cross. Tony Bove dedicated many volunteer hours at the Red Cross and he gave pint after pint after pint of blood. So much so they named a street after him. Tony believed there's life in the blood. And so did Jesus. I think of another saint who walked among us who cheers us on to victory today. I'm thinking about a person who had the foresight to name the church as a beneficiary to a life insurance policy. I'm thinking of Kent Durfee. Kent Durfee loved adult education and he named the church as a beneficiary of his life insurance policy because he wanted uh, to give a gift that kept on giving. But what Kent didn't realize was that soon after he would be diagnosed with cancer and he fought that heroic battle, but he later succumbed to it. But think about what his bequest has done for adult education, the Durfee lectures, uh, can't believe that the conversation should go on between issues of faith and life, between church and society. Uh, we literally occupy the corner of Broadway and Central. In a physical sense, we occupy the physical space of Broadway and center and central. But from the perspective of faith, we are at the intersection of faith and life. And the church must speak the truth into that situation. Think about all the people who have attended the Durfee lectures and have had their faith strengthened in this life. You probably know saints yourself who inspire you to run the race set before you. I'm thinking about my own mother. She passed away about two years ago. Do you know that for 35 years, every Tuesday, my mother would go to Lowe's and Fishes, a food pantry, to distribute groceries to people in need? Because she believed in the Lord's Prayer. Give us our daily bread. And she believed everyone had a right for daily bread. And she looked for the day when there would be no need for a food pantry. She greeted the promises of God from afar. I'm sure you know of others who are now in the stands cheering us. The starter has called you by name. He said, runners, take your mark. The pistol will sound. And the question will be, will you run the race set before you? Looking to Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith. And will you hear the saints who have now taken their place in the stands 
cheering us on to victory. I myself can't wait to visit another Hall of Fame. Not on earth, of course, but in heaven. And the question is, well, I see you there. I pray so. Nothing would give me greater joy than for you to run the race in such a way that your life inspires others to live for God, to live for what God loves, for you to be connected to the life source that gives our life meaning and everyone's life. Jesus came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Let us embrace that life to the fullest today. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.